Good evening and welcome to Midnight Movie Club and my trailer breakdown for our first trailer for The Grudge. We've been waiting in a while for this one and I must say the trailer was pretty much worth the wait. I thought it was a solid trailer even though I feel like I've seen the trailer a hundred times before with so many horror trailers being cut the way it was. I thought it had some real nice looking stuff in there though so let's get into it. So the trailer kicks off with John Cho's character Peter Spencer showing up to the grudged house that is 44 Rayburn Drive. We can see that Peter and his wife run a real estate agency and have been given the listing to sell this house. But when Peter comes to have a chat with its owners about selling it, it seems like there's nobody home, so he makes a grave mistake and goes inside. Now that he has entered, he has left himself wide open for the grudge spirit to move in. As he enters the house, we hear someone mumbling gibberish in another room. He then heads upstairs. As he goes to inspect the noise, he ends up entering the bathroom where he is met with what seems like a bath full of blood. And I just want to mention here that I am really liking the use of the wide angle lens to kind of distort all of the straight lines that you see in the frame. It gives it that creepy off kilter look and it adds to the disorientation of the supernatural occurrences. You'll find that they seem to use it a lot in the shots in the trailer, especially when it comes to the grudge house, making it seem more otherworldly. But moving on, after taking a peek into the tub, two hands come out and grab Peter forcing him to flee back. This is what I am guessing is his first contact with the grudge spirit in this film and ends up bringing him into the path of Detective Muldoon, being played by Andrea Riseborough. Peter tells her that something happened to him at the house and she ends up going to investigate with Damien Bashir's character who tells us that someone was murdered in the house. As he tells us this, we see a woman being grabbed from behind by what looks like a man. Maybe this is the woman who was murdered in the house and it is her spirit who is the grudge spirit of this film. Anyway, moving on, Detective Muldoon asks why Bashir's character never went into the place to investigate, to which he responds, something never felt right about it. So at this point, he hadn't been inside, so the grudge spirit couldn't have touched him yet. As he says this, we get a flash of another character played by Jackie Weaver. There isn't even a name to this character yet, so I'm not 100% sure about her role, but I do have an idea of where she will end up, and I'll go more into that in a little while. After another transition, we cut to another crime scene, this time deep out in the woods. The detectives are then met with a car that has what looks like a burnt out corpse in the driver's seat. We hear one of the cops say, looks like we've got another one. So maybe they have found somebody else like this, or there have been a number of dead bodies showing up by this point. Detective Muldoon then starts putting things together, asking if the body they found in the car all burnt up is related to 44 Rayburn Drive, the grudged house. No idea how it could be related when it's out there in the middle of the woods, but maybe the driver was a previous owner of the home. I also think that the driver of this car and a dead body could be Jackie Weaver's character. More on that in a second. We then get an awesome creepy flash of Lynn Shea as she holds her hand screaming after chopping off her fingers. The director told us previously that this happens at the height of her grudge induced madness, possibly right after she kills her husband. Then after this we see Detective Muldoon make the mistake of entering the grudge house and letting the grudge curse in. As she searches the house we get a real nice shot of fingers and the top of a head with the iconic long black hair rising from the tub. We also hear that iconic gurgle sound that I have to say I'm happy it's made a return. It really wouldn't be a grudge film without that sound. After this we then see her talk with Peter about the house where she reveals that she thinks something has followed her home. We then get a really creepy sequence with Muldoon in her son's room as she sees a spirit laying face down, scurry under his bed before leaping at her 
from the shadows. I'm kinda annoyed we saw this in the trailer, as when it comes to this part in the film now, we know exactly what to expect, and some may say that it's a pretty run of the mill jump scare, which it is, so I do hope there aren't too many of these and we do get something more creative, but overall I thought it looked okay and that it was done alright. The way the spirit moved under the bed I thought was really creepy anyway, that's something that I liked throughout the trailer, how some of the spirits seemed to move. Next we see hair coming from a plug hole in the bathtub again, just before we see who I believe is Lynn Shay's character being launched down a flight of stairs. It looks like her right hand has been bandaged up since she chopped off her fingers, and it looks like her head as well. So maybe this is her killing herself due to the curse in a hospice or a mental asylum, something like that. At this point she's just went batshit crazy and decided to end it. Then after this shot we see Jackie Weaver's character again, driving the car that was found at the crime scene with the body that was all messed up, which leads me to believe it was hers. As she is driving we see someone from behind her too, it looks like a man, so it looks like we will be getting a lot of different spirits throughout this film, probably all connected to the house in some way with the curse, but it looks like this man comes out from behind her, probably kills her, and she ends up all messed up in the driver's seat and then found later on in the woods by the detectives. We then get a quick flash of an image we have seen before, with Damien Bashir's character sitting in a car with a female spirit behind him. This could possibly be the woman we saw getting grabbed from behind earlier on in the trailer. Then after this we get my favourite shot of the trailer, it was very exorcist free in how it was done. We see Peter coming up the stairs with a spirit behind him scurrying up the wall almost like a spider. It looks like it was stop motion or something as well or just sped up. Either way it looks super creepy and reminded me of the exorcist free scene with the old woman on the ceiling. I really liked it. Then another image we have seen before, a grudge spirit on top of Shay's character, maybe this is where she's driven to killing herself or her husband and chopping off her fingers. Then the next shot I want to talk about is this one right here. We see Tara Westwood's character Fiona with Kyoko herself floating in behind her. So it is nice to see that we are getting the original grudge spirit in this movie, but I can't help but think it would have been nice to save that reveal for the film. Although I do understand it, they do want arses and seats, and showing this spirit will maybe make grudge fans more inclined to go. Then we see Muldoon grabbed from behind by what looks like Kyoko's hands, just before getting an all too familiar shower scene with Peter, as he is washing his hair, a hand appears through it. I really do hope that they do something a little bit different with that scene and don't let it play out the exact same way as before, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Right now for me it looks like it's got potential, this film does look promising, but I do have to say I am worried it's going to be a run of the mill jump scare flick. I really hope it's more than that. But from this trailer it seems creepy enough and it has got me interested, but let me know what you made of it in the comment section down below. Also if you enjoyed this breakdown then give it a like, and if you haven't already then what are you doing, subscribe to join the club. As always thank you very much for watching and good night.